Ben, thank you for... Oh, wait, I should read this like Sean Connery. Ben, thank you for coming on the Game Store Guy podcast. I really enjoy talking about building tables and old wood. Here is my Atari XE. When it tries to boot, it has a Rome error. I threw in the ATA cables I could find in my shop. I hope you can use them. Thanks again for looking at this. I'm in absolutely no hurry. That's good. To get this back, so take your time. When you are done, I'll PayPal you the money to ship it back. Thanks again, Kevin Canino, a.k.a. the Game Store Guy. Well, thank you, Kevin. All right, let's see what's inside. <gasps> wow! Ultra ATA cables. I can use these when doing my accessibility projects. I mean, you can you can buy the, you know that thin cable, but it's always good to recycle. So this is the Atari XE game system. So this was Atari's second try at using the Atari 800 computer hardware to make a game system. Uh, rumor has it the purpose of this was to just use up or cause more uh, uh, peripheral sales like disk drives and whatnot. So this is, as far as I know, the last 8-bit Atari computer that was made. Kind of like an 8-bit guy. Ooh, it even has the zapper gun. Uh, okay, you know what is really good about the Nintendo zapper? It feels like a gun when you hold it. This is more like a Buck Rogers with like a stick and a rod. I mean, yeah, it's not ergonomic at all. But I've actually never seen one of these in person. I wonder how it works. It, it, no, it can't work like a light pen. It must just use colored flashes, kind of like the zapper. Like, the light pens they would have back in the day, they would actually detect when the um, the electron beam was passing by. Oh, ball blazer. Nice. Star Raiders, of course. Now, they, you know, they had cartridges for the XE, but they were basically identical to the old... Atari 800 cartridges. If we just reveal it there, see that? Although I think they did uh, have some larger cartridges that implemented bank switching for larger games. Well, the weight of this makes me think it's the power supply. So apparently there's something wrong with this system. Man, that's so huge. What does this spit out? All of this just for five volts at one amp? All that for a drop of blood. All right, what's this? Oh, wow. It's, well, part of the XE joystick. Guess he's missing the cap. I assume that would have been a gray cap. Maybe I could 3D print one. <sighs> Here's the keyboard, as if that wasn't obvious. Oh, no, it looks like this might need to be retro brighted. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I watch all of the 8-Bit Guys videos. Although, you know, sometimes he can be a little aloof. And here's the console itself. Or should I say the computer? Wow! Look at those amazing pastel colors. Power, reset, options, select, start. Yeah, I've actually used these many times in the past. They're pretty much the best thing to make portable Ataris out of. Even that project that I made on the Ben Heck show, the final episode. It was based on an Atari XEGS. Yeah, but now they're kind of getting hard to find and rare, so it's probably not appropriate to hack these up anymore. Although, you know, you can, you know, you can get all the parts as seconds. It's not that hard to find. I think the only thing that's a little more unobtainium is the Freddy chip for the memory map, but you know, you could just not have that, just have an 800 XL. Oh, as someone reach out to me, after the uh, Mario Cement Factory video where I'm like, hey, I will fix rare stuff for free. And uh, he's like, I've got something rare for you. And he told me what it was. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, that is rare. So, yeah, I might do it. I won't say what it is, though, but it's I don't know if anyone's ever <laughs> anyone's ever even talked about it or shown it before. Meanwhile, in the comments, Ben, I never see you use a grounding strap. Um, I'm in a basement in the summer. I'm lucky if I can get the humidity down to 60% with the dehumidifier. Also, I don't care. All right, let's try ball blazer. Um, hmm. Why is it doing a memory test? That usually happens when you hold down select, I think. 
Because ball blazers should be like. Oh, these don't really go in very solidly. Well, wait, that works. Oh, what's the problem? Here's some of my own cartridges. Galaxian. Hmm. Maybe it's a cartridge slot issue. Oh wait, I gotta put these in a different pile. Can never have enough basic cartridges. Oh, basketball, that's a oldie but goodie. Hmm, that one works. I used to play this one a lot when I was a kid. Microsoft Basic 2. It might be a RAM issue. Was this thing reporting any bad RAM? What does it even check the ROM against? I mean, that doesn't make any sense. Like, there's no... Is there a checksum in the ROM? Like, why is it even doing that? I seem to recall... This thing won't boot to a language unless the keyboard is installed. Oh man, but I wanted to play Ball Blazer. Nope. Hey, wasn't it on that? I was in that video once. Was that with the 8 bit guy about how we all remember basic? I mean, 8 bit guy, he's, he can, he's free to make fun of me. She'd be like, ah, oh, I'm Ben. I'm a drunken Wisconsinite and I inhale slaughter fumes. I want to go play Call of Duty. <laughs> I just I need to go to Staples and buy some paper clips. <laughs> Ooh, nice shielding. Oh, that should just come out. have one of these. Has someone been in here before? The tabs aren't bent. Yeah, normally these tabs are bent over, so I don't think I'm the first one in this thing. Wow, look at that. Now let's get rid of this RF shielding. We don't need it. Here's what's left of my spare XEGS. As you can see, I removed pretty much all the custom chips. I think I believe that's the PIA. That one's pretty common, so there's no need for that. Uh, there's the RAM. It's, um, yeah, it's 64 words, well, 64K words of four bits. So you put them together, you get eight bits. What is causing it not to... Well, yeah, the weird thing is that it's not, it's not even booting to, like, basic. Wait, didn't this have, like, built-in missile command? I want to say, yeah, the mask ROM is 16k and the top one of the 8k banks is oh wait no no it would be no it'd be bigger than that it would be like 24k it'd be like 8k of os 8k of basic and then another 8k of missile command all right so if there's nothing hooked up to this including the keyboard it's supposed to boot to missile command which would be on this rom but it's not if you plug the keyboard in it's supposed to boot to basic but it's not. Might be something wrong with the uh, memory management controller, which I know is that chip right there. Someone has been in here before. Looks like the RF modulator was desoldered, the color timing pot, and the power switch. And these buttons. Oops, I'm gonna go all chopstick on this. It's the only way to fly. Come on. 300 ohms resistance. Are these switches even, that one doesn't seem to do anything. Oh, I noticed something. Can you see it? Can you see what I see? Some joints, some joints, they look a little cold. This console is filled with mold. This console is filled with mold. 
said Jack Tramell to Commodore. I am getting out of here. I am getting out of here. I don't want your computers anymore. I am getting out of here. He left, he left on a starry night to fill Atari employees with fright. To fill Atari employees with fright. Apparently these uh, mask ROMs going bad is a known issue. I'm going to try um, reflowing the joints and if that doesn't work I can burn an EEPROM to replace the missing data. Actually, I probably have a backup one of these ROMs someplace because whenever I build one of these, I usually put on the um, the Mr. Atari My IDE custom ROM so it can boot to a SD card. Or, I'm sorry, a flash card. Yeah, so I actually probably have a spare one of these ROMs in my bin of ROMs. How about some more Jack Tramiel Christmas songs? Cheap, they told me, pa rum pa pum pum Make this stuff cheap as you can, po rum pa pum pum We have to watch out for Japan, po rum pa pum pum Build Vic-20s as fast as you can, po rum pa pum 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 <laughs> Which, which celebrity was for the Vic-20? Oh, I hope it wasn't Bill Cosby. No, that was the TI-99. Oh, same issue. So it's time for ROM Swap. Ah, oh, don't worry, I have a socket here from my extensive socket collection. Gotta make sure I didn't damage any of the vias. Now the user can put in whatever ROM they want, although they probably won't after I fix it. They'll be like, wow. I'm just gonna leave it like this forever. Uh-oh, looks like one of the holes wasn't fully desoldered. Solder, solder. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Europe, oh, did you hear the way that Yankee said solder? Oh, I know, I can't believe it. Now, oh, here's something you can do if you're having trouble with some of the pins. You can actually put the ROM into the socket and then push it through, and that will prevent um, the pins from popping back up. A little push there we go nice so this has already been flashed with something i assume it's the um my ide obviously that's not what we want for this system but it should at least get it to boot then i can just flash the correct standard rom because i have those files because right to repair just like my chat with uh lewis rossman it's like Rossman, R-O-S-S, -S, man. I mean, it's not Roseman, Rossman. Hey, everybody. Yeah, I hope his initiative succeeds. Because if you don't care about right to repair now, you will in 20 years when it costs you $1,000 to get your windshield wiper replaced. Oh, I wonder if the dentist will give me another free toothbrush tomorrow, even though I was already just there in January. Oh wait, the reason I had to go back was because he found a cavity. No, he found two cavities. So he probably won't give me another free toothbrush. All right, let's see if that did something. Well, now it's not doing anything. WTF? Oh no, I've destroyed it. I slapped in a new 32K one-time programmable ROM. Uh, it's still not giving me a display, but there is bus activity. I've got it hooked up to my scope. Um, but I've also noticed there's just a lot of like bad solder joints. And look at that. Maybe that's why we're not getting signal, but why was it working before? Okay, I went in and I reballed all the main chips. I still need to do some cleanup, but we should be able to at least test it here. Oh, that thing break off from. All right, so we got our one time programmable 32K byte ROM. Hey, Missile Command! Well, I think that's done it. So we fixed up a lot of uh, questionable uh, solder joints and also swapped in a new ROM, well, EEPROM, because the old one is known to be touchy, so uh, better safe than sorry. I banish you to the world of 
taken. No one here knows of the Avatar. All right, let's uh, get this back together and play some games. Let's play this awesome console from 1987 that's really just a computer. Okay, well that was fun and all. Let's try some other games. How about basketball? Oh, basketball doesn't want to run. Oh, it wasn't plugged in all the way. All right. Is that me? Okay. No, 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 no! Remember this being better. How do I do a slam, slam dunk? How do I dunk the slam dunk? <laughs> How do I do a slam dunk? Okay, all right, I'm gonna do a lot. Nice. Ooh, this one looks cool, Galaxian. Start. <laughs> Come at me, bro. You want some? Yeah. Oh, these buggers are hard to hit. How about everyone's favorite game, Microsoft Basic? Of course, there's no keyboard hooked up. I wonder what happens when we plug Basic into a system that has Basic built into it. Probably some sort of black hole is formed. Or it just runs. Now let's try this one. This is the homebrew space area that someone spent like five years programming. Uh, it should run on an XD system. It doesn't run on the 800, but it does run on the 800 XL. There it goes. It just needed a little love. Welcome to the family. Amazing! <laughs> it, it scales better than any of the other home versions. At least until, you know, the Sega Saturn, but that's cheating. dithers the colors to simulate more colors, but on a CRT with latency, uh, well, phosphor latency, can't even really tell. It does make it look a little muddy, but, oh, who am I, who am I kidding? This is amazing. Bye-bye. Geezer? this project back when it was in progress, which would have been like 2009, 2011. So I think I bought, yeah, I got this at the Portland Retro Gaming Expo. This is the 2017 edition. The, on cartridge, it was like 50 bucks. Well worth it to support such an amazing conversion. This is running on a computer from 1979. Sorry, Atari XEGS. I know, I know who you are. Yes. 
It's an airfoil! going on the edge of the checkerboard. So cool. Okay, let me see if I remember how to do this. Wait, no, I want... I want to play against the computer. Oh, I guess select pauses it. I wonder if I didn't resolder the option button correctly, 53279. And I didn't remember that. I had to double check. I was a little off. I put 53239 the first time. Start, select. Yeah, option is not connected. Well, I guess I gotta go back in there and fix that button. That's why I couldn't select a CPU opponent in Ball Blazer. Okay, I fixed it. depending on how far you are from the goal when you shoot it. Oh, shoot! Whoa, no, 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 no! Oh, no, I missed! Come on, come on, come on! You shot a pass! pointer to make up for lost time. Seconds. 
Take a knee. Oh, it's all over. Do, 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 do. too difficult getting the Atari XE game system up and running. Guess we'll see you in the next episode, and I'll leave you with this.